These weapons are primitive, but as technology gets better, 3D printing can improve the quality, the accuracy, the effectiveness of weapons. Five rounds. This is the one that um, you can 3D print. The use of 3D printing, the use of new technology has made it way easier and more accessible. Mm -hmm. And there's not much to really change that. I mean, the right. technology is advancing. 3D printing is a technology still in its infancy. However, homemade firearms have been around for a long time, and now that 3D printers are easily available to the individual consumer, those who make homemade firearms have been pushing the boundaries of current 3D printed technology to streamline the process of constructing homemade lethal weapons. This streamlining ranges from something as small as 3D printing a magazine to constructing a firearm entirely out of 3D printed components. But to some, 3D printing a mere magazine, pistol, submachine gun, or rifle is not enough. Enter Jonathan Wilde or as I began to call him, Johnny Rocket. A man who is known for progressing lethal 3D printing with his homemade rocket launchers. Each of his launchers utilize 3D printed components to varying degrees. He is a part of a niche community of those who endeavor to marry 3D printed technology and homemade rocket launchers to efficiently and consistently produce what the ATF calls destructive devices. Now, if you thought 3D printing guns is out there, 3D printing a rocket launcher is undoubtedly the next step in democratizing violence. The launcher we had a chance to test fire is a recoilless launcher, Jonathan's Frankenfaust, which is essentially a bastardized Panzerfaust. Jonathan has also successfully 3D printed his own Flingerfaust, which is a nine barrel rocket launcher designed during the Second World War by Germany to allow their individual infantry troops to shoot down low flying aircraft. Note that this Flinger Faust is made out of 3D printed steel. This is kind of a one of a kind and it's a, a World War II prototype or a reproduction of that prototype. It was one of the first anti-aircraft weapons ever invented, portable anti-aircraft weapons. So I'm going to hand this to you since you're the creator and expert. So yeah, uh, so what you would have, uh, you would have a rocket clip with nine of those rockets um, and the clip would be inserted in the rear section and then from there you've got a, a loaded rocket launcher and then uh, if you want to fire it and what you would do is basically you would you know you push uh, with your thumb down and that would release it I think it's already been fired uh, but this would go forward and press the button and it would send a current to all the uh, rockets and ignite them okay. it's a very basic weapon uh, I modified the original design a little bit to be more easy to manufacture this one just uses a switch and I have two 9 volt batteries, 3D printed plastic case right there. So there's, there's elements of 3D printed plastic. From, from a standpoint of DIY, this is kind of a one of a kind. I saw this in a video game and I thought it was cool. <laughs> so the beauty of uh, you know, home manufacturing yeah. can be, uh, you know, you, you can build whatever you want. You just sure. gotta put your, you know, time and effort into it. And fill out the ATF paperwork. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and wait your period until they approve it. After checking out some of his homemade launchers, he was kind enough to allow us to tag along and test fire one of them for ourselves. So we just left the McDonald's, met up with the rest of the launcher community in the Portland area, and now we're on our way to the shooting area, which is deep in Cascadia. Honestly, it's probably the most American morning ever going to McDonald's and then right after going to test fire, completely homemade, recoilless launchers.
heck of a thing to pop the trunk to and find. Rockets. Am I good to touch these? Oh yeah, go ahead. Panzerfaust rounds are very authentic. It's all written in German too. Is this how it was, like, for example, during the Second World War? Like, That's pretty realistic, yeah. Perfect. So we got plastic stems, and then uh, Tim over there, he uh, lathed uh, some wood ones for us. Now, let me ask you. Uh, so the chalk is going to go in here, right? Yes. Now, hypothetically, you could put an explosive in here. Uh, yeah, but you'd need a fuse. You need a fuse. So it'd okay. be a sacri uh, You'd need to make a new component. Okay. Unless you just drill the hole in <laughs> and a fuse cable. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, you would have to have some form of um, a fuse mechanism, like impact fuse. Right, right. And yeah, what about on those ones? So um, before they used them, uh, certain models, they would take the warhead off, they would put the fuse in, they'd reattach it, and then they would fire it. What's difficult is making the fuse, mm -hmm. and I don't have experience, I'm not licensed to do that. Right. Um, but uh, it didn't matter with the shape of the warhead. Right. Uh, making a safe, reliable fuse is, um, you know, where you're going to have trouble. Sure. I'd say it's probably easier to have an impact fuse in the front rather than, like, uh, one in the rear. Sure. Warheads, um, they can be assembled like this, but they can have their propelling charge attached and filled and ready to go until you're at your shooting location. You're allowed to make an explosive, which is the propellant charge, uh, but you can't transport it or store it at your home uh, unless it has a small arms exemption. Uh, destructive devices don't have that. So uh, what we're gonna do now is just assemble these. All right, so this one is a basic CMMG mag. Costs probably 30 bucks or more if you were to buy it. Um, about 25 rounds. This is the one that um, you can 3D print. We worked on this and ended up publishing um, a CMMG version as well as a, um, what brand makes that other mag? Smith & Wesson. Smith & Wesson mags. So, um, you know, you have both of, the, both of the kinds. But you can print this for about $5 worth of plastic yeah. and then a spring that costs probably 50 cents on the internet. Um, they work pretty much just about as reliably. Um, and this one is actually print in place. Whereas, you know, before we sort of adapted it, it was you print two um, and then clamshell them together like the CMMG mag. But with 3D printing, that actually works better this way. Um, so yeah. And we haven't had any reliability issues at all or anything with the uh, 3D printed ones. Just standard M203 LMT. If you guys want, you're more than welcome to run some rounds through it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So uh, as you can see, there are a lot of fun toys out here and we're just kind of occupying ourselves while Jonathan is readying the uh, rockets, getting them together. So this is a lot of fun. Appreciate it coming. Damn, it's not that loud. <laughs> just your standard. M781, nothing fancy, same as those rockets Johnny's whipping up. And it does have the uh, 38 blank in the back, basically, as your propellant. You ever shot one of these before? No, sir. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. Come on, grab it. Go grab it. Keep the muzzle down and then just rack it back nice and hard.
That's a lot of fun. And this stuff has a pressure rating of like 3,000 PSI or somewhere around there. So it's pretty strong stuff. Yeah. And these are 3D printed as well, right? Yeah. You can literally see right there. You want to put a warhead on that? Yeah. If someone could press down weight on yeah. that. I'll just put it up against my plate carrier. Make sure to light down so that I don't so I think this one shrank a little bit. I think it's just got a lip on it. Yeah. Let me see if this one will work. Yeah. It just had a lip on it. So with 3D printing, uh, sometimes you get like edges and stuff. I'm not actually the best 3D printer. <laughs> I'm really bad, but my prints are more utility than looks. Yeah. Pretty solid fit. Yeah, 3D printing, you do get uh, thickness differences, and this one has some... Do you know what caused this? My printer's just really old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen this before, but again, it, it didn't increase the diameter yeah. too much. That's also one of those things that I've noticed with the one millimeter nozzles. They have, you know, issues like that, especially because the printer's just not really designed to be pushing that much material out all at once. So, yeah. so you get some funky effects. I still get a crack out of this one. So I was using Amazon boxes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, another product Amazon didn't think it would be used for. Ready for launch? Okay, we're live. Ready? Got a little burnt on that one. Yeah, we're gonna need gloves for that. I forgot to wear the glove. Did anyone see that uh, stabilize or? Um, yeah, it flew straight. I watched it go. It was a very uh, parabolic arc. Yeah, once you're there, everything just turns to white. Yeah. <laughs> Appreciate it. Ooh, that was fun. It's always the most nerve wracking the first round you do. Because <laughs> yeah. it's a new powder we're trying, new load, but uh, it seems like it went through pretty good. So that was the first successful test fire. I didn't see how far it went, but I see maybe 70, 80 yards. Oh, there it is. So it was a hollow um, warhead, but uh, it seems like the damage was pretty good. And the fins held up pretty good, so you could probably get another use out of the fins. This is toast. I saw when it uh, landed, it kind of tumbled and went sprayed everywhere. Yeah. So. Once it's in the rock pit like this, it's done. Like some other place. Yeah, so there's there's a hole here. The original, there's a, uh, a primer holder right in this area. What happened is um, I cut a hole to ex uh, relieve the pressure so this doesn't blow off. For now, you need a glove to hold it. Okay. Uh, in future, I'm going to thread that and plug the hole. So if you were to hold this thing on, you know, fire it from your shoulder, is there a danger of the gas coming out and like burning your face? Uh, not too much uh, because the other one, uh, when I fired it in the other configuration, it was right next to your face and it was never an issue. Right. The issue was my thumb was, I think it was right here. You know, it's just that we're modifying an existing build. Yeah. So you just got to work around it. So uh, we'll do one more remote test fire with DIY projectile, okay. see how that does. Mm. And then we'll shoot off the shoulder. Let's do it. is the uh, primer so it's an electronic match it's ATF approved and then we're just gonna put that down there so the warhead so now we have a live warhead inside uh, hopefully when it impacts it just breaks open and you get to know where you hit your target ready I chalked really good. 
I think we're good to shoot off the shoulder now. The defense stay on pretty good, and this stays on pretty good. So that's good test data. I was concerned that the black powder would pretty much destroy that uh, the counterweight. There's uh, several washers in there. Uh, it looks like it sheared off here. From what I saw, it stabilized pretty well. So three friends, save some money, and uh, these look like they're reusable. Nice. Do you have any thoughts on it? I'm just incredibly impressed. <laughs> I uh, figured it was only a matter of time before 3D printing reached such amazing heights as homemade rocket launchers. Being able to do this, these guys are uh, pushing the limit. You know, depending on what direction history takes in 3D printing, uh, I very much believe that guys like him are going to be uh, credited as the the founders and the pioneers of this uh, interesting sub subculture of lethal 3D printing. So, yeah. I wouldn't recommend copying this without, you know, doing research yourself and studying it and knowing how much pressure the tube can take. Not cheaping out on materials, you go with the best materials you can. We could go higher than two ounces, three ounces, but we, uh, we want to be safe today, so we're going to keep it low. Let's go shoot some sh Fire the hole! That's awesome. Felt a little warmth on my back, but I think that was just the smoke. But uh, yeah, I think there was enough distance. I almost hit it. So a lot of modern ones will be fiberglass and they fire at one time and you know, it's done. We got steel here and pretty thick steel at that. You know, we can fire multiple times. Fire in the hole. How does that feel? Uh, pretty good. I didn't die, so that was a plus. <laughs> Do you feel the uh, concussion? Yeah, I felt like something just kind of like tickled the back of my head a little bit. Yeah, I think that's yeah. the uh, the fire coming out the rear. Yeah. Because it's, it's a very short tube, so mm -hmm. there's really not a lot. Yeah. Um, as long as you don't have any burns or anything. No, I'm you good. Could, yeah. Uh, in World War II, uh, there was cases of people when it, when the Panzerfaust was fired like this. Yeah. People would put the tube on their chest, mm. not realizing oh, the backblast, seriously. and they'd kill themselves. At least there's reports of that. Right. Uh, so yeah, backblast, it can kill you. It's insane how there's almost like no recoil whatsoever. No. I was like, all, all the excess pressure is coming out of here. Yeah. And you know, really, you just pull the trigger, and then everything goes white. You, yeah. Did you close your eyes, or you? you I kept them slightly open. Yeah. yeah. You, and it just fills up with uh, yeah. white. How's your hand? Is it fun? Perfect. Yeah. With a glove, it's good yeah. to go. Good experience? Yeah. I, sh I, I guess I underestimated how low it would shoot, but... Yeah, it's more of an arcing weapon. Yeah. You really have to aim high. Yeah. But I mean, for blasting truck. That's still pretty cool, though. the most common destructive device uh, on the civilian market. 
most people shoot chalk rounds and that's what inspired me to do my um, you know uh, panzer fast chalk rounds these hold a little less but they've got a pretty good kick to them a little low Let's see if we can get that has a lot more kick than I remember <laughs> How are you feeling about today? Feeling good about these rockets? Yeah, I think uh, we learned a lot today. Um, we had a couple uh, uh, rounds go down, uh, like sooner than we hoped, but most of them had enough power to charge to really fully ignite. We got a pretty good range. We were able to hit that back berm, that wall over there. Yeah, we covered this hillside in plenty of chalk. We didn't have any failures to ignite, so that's good. Um, I think everyone had a good time. So. Yeah. So what, is there, was there anything you were really worried about coming out here today? Like anything uh, you didn't know? The nothing? new propellant, that okay. was something that I was concerned about. Um, it's a lot, it's a little hotter than uh, what I used in the past, um, but I, we were able to get up to over three ounces. So I was happy with that. Kept it low to be safe, especially other people shooting it. Better safe than sorry. Um, accuracy, um, you know, the, the, it's, hitting low so you really have to arc so uh, this would need to be modified to be reflect that but windage i mean i think we did pretty good at you know where we pointed it it got in that line and the fins seem to work as well oh, yeah. fins were probably the best thing of the day they all worked um, i modified these uh, this is a reproduction you know display model and i added uh, my own fins and these seem to be working perfectly every single one of them is reusable um, i've also cut myself a bunch today so Maybe uh, sand these down at some point to take off the, the sharp edge. Happy with it? Yeah. All right. When it comes to the legality of his launchers, Jonathan Wilde does everything by the book. Everything is registered via the proper government channels. And speaking of books, Jonathan Wilde has published two which document his process of making his launchers. Now, even though you could acquire one of his books and use it as your own guide to make your own launcher, Jonathan sees his books more as a simple documentation of a topic by an enthusiast. The books also take a very historical approach to the launchers that are built. Uh, so back in the 90s, there was a lot of books of a similar nature. They had already kind of gone over this topic, but back in the day, there was black and white books. The photo quality was terrible. There wasn't really a big investment on quality firearms books of this nature. Um, okay. And mine isn't necessarily a DIY book, but it is more of a showing exactly how I was able to do it. If you can tell the difference, it's kind of a right. gray area. More of a documentation. Yeah, like in, a build you, diary. Yeah, yeah. a build I'd diary, like, okay. So I'd like to call it that, yeah. Okay. A build diary makes more sense because there, there's some information that um, is not in the book because what I want people to do is their own research mm -hmm. and that way if they decide to build something similar they're not relying just on the book mm -hmm. they're actually knowing and understanding the principles before they uh, risk themselves building something like this yeah this seems like to me much more of a statement about personal freedom um, and the ability to obviously construct things yourself but I, I don't know exactly how to put it it's like it, like it's it, there's so much effort and time put into this at least to me it doesn't seem like it, it would be worthwhile for somebody that's attempting to commit a crime or do something nefarious unless it was an incredibly specific thing that yeah. like would call uh, there's sentence. very few instance instances where i would see this being used in a crime sure. that it would be more effective than other alternatives that they have you know it's a risk we take i think freedom has a level of danger mm -hmm. so you know the fact that this information is available, and it's always been available, I mean, you can just pick up a history textbook, it's a very simple operation. It's propellant, projectile, tube. Right. It, you can go as basic, you don't need any of this. Right. All you need is a projectile, the propellant, and some way to ignite it. That's mm -hmm. it. It's very, very simple. You can make it at any hardware store. It's nothing that can't be made very, very simply without 3D printing, without any of the electronics. It's very basic. Right. So even if you didn't tell anyone how to do it, the first basic logical idea of how to project something, it's that, it's just, you know, it, it's basically a cannon, you know, from like the 1700s, same concept. It's just, instead of all the pressure going through the front, you're releasing some in the back. Okay. So there's no recoil. Yeah. And that's it. 